this is Sunita and I am going to explain about interrupts in 8086 microprocessor. After going through this lesson, uh, you will understand what is an interrupt and what is meant by interrupt vector table and you are able to explain the response of 8086 when an interrupt occurs and what is an interrupt means it is a method of processing the microprocessor by a peripheral device. So an interrupt is used to cause a temporary halt in the execution of a program. Most microprocessors allow normal program execution to be interrupted by some means, so by means of external signal or by means of internal signals and uh, when that interrupt occurs, the microprocessor has to stop executing the current uh, uh, program and it has to service uh, the interrupt. So after executing the interrupt service routine, um, it will come back to the interrupted program. So how it will come back to the interrupted program means uh, by placing an iWritten instruction at the end of a interrupt service routine, uh, you are able to bring back the control to the mainline program and uh, coming to the different sources of interrupts, in, uh, you have three different sources of interrupts like external signal applied to the uh, interrupt pins of 86 microprocessor like the NMI pin and the INTR pin. And second one is uh, execution of the int instruction in your program and third one is if you are executing a program and in that program if some error condition occurs it is going to produce an interrupt. So these are the three ways of uh, um, producing or uh, three sources of interrupts in 86 microprocessor and how does an interrupt, how does 8086 microprocessor knows about the interrupt occurrence means. So at the end of each instru instruction cycle, 8086 checks to see if any uh, interrupts have been requested or not. So if interrupt is requested, it is going to do the following sequence of instru instructions, following sequence of uh, actions. So what are those actions means? So when interrupt occurs, the microprocessor, uh, it has to stop executing the current program and it has to transfer the control to the mainline um, control from the mainline to the interrupt service routine so it why you it has to execute the interrupt service routine uh, after that it has to bring back the control to the mainline program so to do that thing it will do all these steps first uh, what it will do means it will push the flag register contents onto the stack why because if you don't want to uh, if uh, you don't want to change the flag register contents, it, you have to push that onto the stack and next one is INTR uh, interrupt is disabled uh, by means of uh, interrupt flag. So if uh, 86 microprocessor uh, doesn't want to interrupt, uh, if it doesn't want to be interrupted by another interrupt, so it, it will clear the IF flag. So this interrupt service routine gets executed. Uh, and uh, next uh, it will clear that TF flag also and next one is uh, uh, it decrements the stack pointer by 2 and it de uh, it will push the current core segment register and current IP register contents onto the stack. This is nothing but CS and IP combination now holds the address of the uh, next instruction where the uh, interrupt occurred. Okay, so mainline program next instruction address is uh, stored in the CS and IP register contents. So when uh, uh, interrupt service routine gets executed, uh, it, it has to bring back the control to this address location. So that's why you are storing the address of the next instruction onto the stack. So and next one is uh, it does an indirect far jump to the uh, start of the uh, uh, procedure where interrupt service routine has been written. Next one is if you see the, the through the uh, flow, so, so mainline program is executing here and interrupt occurred somewhere here and these are the sequences of actions done by the 86 microprocessor. So it uh, brings the ISR address 
here and it the control transfers to the interrupt service routine and the interrupt service routine executes the instructions written in that and i written instruction is placed at the end of the interrupt service routine so it will uh, pop back the contents of ip and cs and flags and uh, the control again returns to the mainline program like this so this is how 86 responds to the interrupt so it will uh, clear the uh, if it will clear the df and pushes uh, cs and ip and pop backs the those who uh, pushed onto the stack and next coming to the uh, interrupt vector table of 86 microprocessor so it is a table which holds the starting addresses of the 256 interrupts so that means 86 microprocessor has the provisions to store 256 interrupt service routine addresses and if you see here in the at the bottom of the table you have interrupt service routine uh, address for type 0 interrupt gets stored at the location 00h and type vector for 255 interrupt uh, gets stored at the location 3FFH that means starting address for the interrupt service routine uh, gets stored in these locations so total 256 uh, interrupt service routine addresses gets stored here and it is total 1k bytes of memory reserved for storing these starting addresses and you can, you can divide the uh, interrupts into three different categories like dedicated interrupts and reserved uh, interrupts and uh, available interrupts so coming to the dedicated interrupts if you see the dedicated interrupts uh, divide by zero and single step non-maskable interrupt type and interrupt instruction uh, int instruction uh, overflow instruction these are the dedicated interrupts all these are interrupts are dedicated in all the 86 family of microprocessor so uh, their behavior you can't change their behavior and uh, all are uh, the the five these five are dedicated in each of the family and coming to the next one reserved interrupts these are reserved for future use so for example 5 to 31 interrupts are called as reserved interrupts and they are used by most complex microprocessor like 286 386 and 486 and here if you see 8259 priority interrupt controller so uh, you can assign 8200fh as uh, interrupt service routine address uh, to uh, for this 8259a and biasing bias uh, system you assign 102 1fh and coming to the available interrupts 32 to 255 are available for you to use as hardware or software interrupts so if you see here for dos you may use 22 3fh uh, as addresses and for remaining 42 ffh are open for the users that means users can assign their own uh, interrupt service routine addresses uh, from this range to uh, this range and next coming to the summary uh, uh, what is the interrupt response uh, how the interrupt vector table is uh, uh, storing the locations and uh, what are the different types of interrupts you understood i think so thank you